Amen. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we ask you to turn to Job chapter 37. Job chapter 37. Um, while you're turning there, always remember to pray for me. And me and Brother Kenny was talking about this the other day. Uh, the main thing when you're preaching is finding the will of God, not necessarily... Um, how much you put into it, but finding what the Lord would have you preach. And the older I get, the more I see that. Job chapter 37, and we're going to begin reading in the verse, first verse, Job 37, in the first verse, the Bible says, At this also my heart trembleth, and is moved out of its place. Hear attentively the noise of his voice, and the sound that goeth out of his mouth. He directeth it under the whole heaven, and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. After it a voice roareth, he thundereth with the voice of his excellency, and he said, Not stay them with his voice heard. But God thundereth marvelously, and his voice great things doeth he, which, it, which we cannot comprehend. For he saith to the snow, Be thou on the earth. Likewise, to the small rain and to the great rain of his strength. He sealeth up the hand of every man that all men may know his work. Then the beasts go into the dens and remain in their places. Out of the south cometh the whirlwind and the cold out of the north. By the breath of God, frost is given, and the breath of the water is straightened. Also by watering, he wearieth the thick cloud. He scattereth his bright cloud, and it is turned round about his counsels, that they may do whatsoever he commandeth upon them, uh, excuse me, commandeth them upon the face of the world in the earth. He causeth it to come whether for correction, or for his land, or for, his, or for mercy. Hearken unto this, O Job, stand still and consider the wondrous works of God. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and watch care. Lord, we thank you uh, for bringing us again together. God, we understand and know that those that you appointed to be here are here this morning, Lord, and we give you the praise for that. God, we pray uh, for those that are outside, Lord, that you draw them unto yourself by your mercy and grace. Be glorified and honored in what's preached this morning. We be thankful to give you the praise for it. For it is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, maybe some not so familiar verses of Scripture uh, and where they're placed at in the book of Job. Uh, this is a response that Elihu give Job concerning the situation that had come upon him. Now, Elihu, if there was a friend in those three, it was Elihu. Now, at one indication, another person arrives, and it may have been Elihu. The third, uh, all those others may have been individuals that were just full of criticism. <clears throat> you know what I find? among Baptist preachers many times is criticism. One criticizing the other and the other criticizing him and it ought not to be so. So I want you to see as Elihu comes on the scene, he gives Job a word of encouragement. Now what we need in the modern day is words of encouragement. Listen, I don't know how this thing will go down. I claim ignorance and, and, and you know what? There may be 20 more presidents after President Biden. I don't know. That's under the hands of the Almighty. But I do know this, that we are to display the spirit of Christ Amen. to everyone. Yeah. Not just the people we like, not just the people that we can commune on politics on, but to everyone. Yeah. And, and, and we as the Lord's people ought to know that, but often we don't practice it. So Elihu begins to give Job remembrance of how great our God is. 
Now, if Job had reminded himself and had kept in his mind and not been critical of Job, because I've not been through what Job went through, but when he had forgotten somewhere along the way how good God is. And you know, if Job forget how good God is, that means you can too. You can begin to get down in the holly mobs and the old me's, and you know what? Soon the devil will st just steal yeah. your joy. Right. Uh, the third, I mean, the second fruit of the spirit is love, and we frequently lose that one. And the second fruit of the spirit is joy, and we frequently lose that one. And the reason why is we start looking all around us and don't focus on the things that God's given us already. Now, uh, I don't know about you this morning. I had a breakfast. I'm not a big breakfast eater anymore. But I found a cookie in the cookie jar, and I ate it for my breakfast. And you know what? That was something that a lot of people didn't have. Amen. That was something that, you know, uh, a lot of people uh, reach in their cookie jar, and there's nothing there. A lot of people don't even have a cookie jar to look into. And so we need to be a, a people understanding on the worst day ever, God's been good. Amen. God's been good. Amen. And so we see that Elihu begins to remind Job of this. Now all of chapter 36 is those reminders as well, but I wanted to mostly focus on these. And he begins by saying, at this, my heart troubled at how good God is, how big God is, what an expanse God is. Man, that makes my heart trouble. And you know what? It ought to make yours to be troubled too when we approach God in such an incidental way and we serve the God of all the universe. We serve the only God that ever has been. And Elihu had enough sense to be troubled that he was approaching God. See, uh, we don't have as much sense as Elihu much of the time, do we? Go through here and run through a little routine thing and offer that to God. Right. Right. Well, what are we talking about? And, and, and so we find then that Elihu had enough spiritual sense. He says, when I began to review these things, I tremble. My, at this also, my heart trembled and it's moved out of its place. Hear attentively the noise of his voice. Now, I want you to see, as he says here, attentively, the voice of his voice, the, the sound of his voice, he wasn't talking about himself. He was talking about God. You, you know, um, one of the things I think Job's issue was, and again, I'm not down on Job. He did a better job than me. But you remember when he brought that little sacrifice up, and he said, it may be that my children have sinned. He knew what they were doing. You know what? You know, I'd whole lot rather say, my kids are in a mess and lay that out before God then they kind of walk around the issue. You know what? Baptists are real good about walking around the issue, are they not? And instead of saying, you know what? We got problems. We got difficulty. We need the help of God. And, and simply put it out there and no doubt the Lord would intervene. So, Elihu says, here, you look at him. You look at the Lord God Almighty. Hear attentively the, vo the, the noise of his voice and the sound that goeth out of his mouth. Then he begins to rem remind Job of some attributes and abilities of God. He directeth it under the whole heaven. Everything he says will happen. Everything he pronounces will come to pass. Now, it never ceases to amaze me that we can trust that with spiritual things, but we can't trust it in carnal things. You know what I'm going to have for supper, Jared? Exactly what God provides. Yeah. That's what I'm, I don't know what it'll be yet. You know what we usually have? We have leftovers on Sunday evening. Whatever uh, we take home from here, we eat again when we get home. But you know what? We're going over to Paris tonight. So I don't know what I'll, I'll get whenever I finally get home. But I do know this. It's a provision of God. Amen. And you know what? That ought to be good enough for me. And, and, and so everything that happens underneath the, uh, the, uh, 
the sovereign will of God, everything under this earth is all spoken by God. He directed it under the whole heaven and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. Even the sun is in the control of all things. Now, you know why we got clouds this morning and a little drizzle coming down? Because God wanted us to have some rain today and you can fuss about it and you can grumble about the mud, but you know what? What you're doing is grumbling again. It's God. We, we have exactly what we need this morning. Yeah. Uh, and, and we should be satisfied with it. Yeah. Where did we ever get off grumbling at God? Mm. But we do. Yeah. Now you, you, you see how that worked out for the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and so we see then that we got to remember how big and great our God really is, and it will it will encourage us. Verse four. After it, meaning the voice. Of, after it, the voice roareth. He thundereth with the voice of his uh, of his excellency. He will not stay them from when his voice is heard. Now I want you to see that in, in, in this situation, he says nothing. I've got the storm under my dominion. I got, you know, years ago, and I think I told some of you about this, but I don't know. There was a Southern Baptist preacher down home called J.P. Quinn, uh, James Patton Quinn, and his his daddy was named Patton, and of course named after him. And uh, Mr. Patton and J.P. was standing under a tree, and they were hoeing their tobacco, and a storm came up, and him and J.P. was standing under the very same tree. Lightning came and took Mr. Patton out into eternity, and J.P. was standing there looking at him. You know what? That's the thing. You know why Mr. Patton died? Because God wanted him to. You know why J.P. lived? Because God wanted him to. See, we don't when, when the storm comes up, and it's coming, tomorrow's supposed to be a very stormy day. I've always said this, when it, when it gets as warm as it is tomorrow like that, you better watch out. And you know what? If it's a big storm tomorrow and, and, and things don't go well, God's behind it. Where did we ever get off again thinking that only God does, does things favorably? There's results to sin. And if he wants to take somebody out, he will. Yep. Now, my cousins that lived up north, and, and granted, Steve, the, the older one, him and John were coming home from school one day, and tornado come up, and they got down in a ditch and, and hid. And when the storm was over, they, they got out and by the phone pole where they were at, there was a number of straws driven through the phone pole. Mm. You know why they didn't hit John? God didn't want them to. Mm. You know what the powerfulness of God to ram a piece of straw through a telephone pole? That takes the hand of God, doesn't it? And, and, and justly so. So the next time you have a, what you perceive as a storm come up in your life, when there's more bills than there are money, listen, God is in it. God is in it. And we need to be satisfied and happy and glad in the things of the Lord. Because listen, nothing ever happens by happenstance or accident. So the wind and the storms are all under his will. God thundereth, thundereth marvelously with his voice. Great things doeth he, and we cannot comprehend. So the next time you hear a big clap of thunder, and you hear it, it you know, you've had them, it's so loud, it, sh uh, it rattles the windows in your house, you remember that God gave you that person. You give him the great, uh, you give him great praise and great glory for what he has done to you. Uh, verse 7, he stilleth up the hand of every man that all men may know his works. Now, stilleth up, I, I, I kind of stood that out. I'm not real sure there's two possibilities there. Number one, if your hands are sealed up, you can't do nothing for yourself. Do you, like to be, do you like to be fed? I don't. I like to feed myself, don't you? Yeah. 
uh, I remember, and Sister Diane will remember this too, Miss Buttermore, she taught us how to be a CNA. She would make you sit with a blindfold on and someone else feed you. Now you didn't know what you were getting. You didn't know how they were going to put it in your mouth. All you had to do was trust them. Right? You know what? He'll put in that mouth the exact same thing. And if he wants to, he'll open your hands up. And if he wants to, he'll close them up. That's under the hand of the Almighty. You know, you know why, why I think he does that is to humble us. To show us that we're not quite as great as we think we are. And he puts us under illness. He puts us under pressure. And in the middle of that, what we need to be doing is blessed be the name of the Lord. Verse 8. Then the beast, uh, then the beast go into the dens and remain in their places. You know what? Bears go into hibernate because God tells them to. You know what? Uh, the deers, uh, usually, they, at least they used to den up. They don't anymore because it's too warm. But you know why they do that? It's because God directs their path. You know why that mosquito hits your window going across the Tennessee River? It's because God said it's time for that mosquito to get out of the way. You see what I'm yeah. saying? Either he's sovereign or not, is he? Yeah. yeah, amen. He can't be sovereign in some things and, and not sovereign in others. That's not sovereignty at all. Right. What that really is is Armenian doctrine, is it not? If you don't believe, uh, y'all know where that tree back over here, uh, Brother Eric got it out of our way, fell across the parking lot over there. You know what happened? Because God wanted to. He says, this tree is done. We're finished with this tree, and I'm going to throw it down. And somebody's going to get it out of the way. And not just somebody. Eric Page is going to move this tree all because I want it to be that way. Now that's a God you go to sleep with. Amen. That's a God that when, when it's all breaking loose around you, you can lay down very quietly and get some good sleep at night and say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. See, there, there's not many people that enjoy that because they really don't understand the character of the God we serve. Verse 9, out of the, out of the south cometh the whirlwind. A whirlwind is tornado. A whirlwind is what we think of as, as a tornado or a strong wind. And he says, I'm going to send them that way. You're going to enjoy one. Uh, a lot of, uh, I guess everybody who don't know where uh, Brother Junior Diane's house is. Well, a lot of people don't know. Just below his shop down there, there was another little house years ago. And you know what? A tornado came by and flipped that dude over. And you know why it didn't flip Diane and Junior's over? Because God didn't want it to be so. He said, I'll protect these. And he took the other one off his foundation. See, that's a God that I want to serve. That's the one that I want to be in the, in the middle of, in the, in the very, understanding the very character of God. This is what I want. I don't want to hope so, maybe so, bring my hands, what's going to happen next, God. I want a God that I understand and know that it's all under his feet. By the breath of God, frost is given. You know, a lot of people are stressed out. And, and listen, it is different. I'll give you that. All y'all that are old as me remember the winter uh, of 77, 78. Man, that was a doozy. People losing electric. We were out of school from Christmas all the way to February 1st. Y'all remember that? Everybody had chains on their tires. It, it was a crazy time to live. And we don't see that anymore. <clears throat> you know what? We don't. Because God don't get hung up on global warming. You know what the weather is, what the weather is, is because God has spoken it. Yeah. If he wants it to frost, it'll frost. And if he wants it to be 110 in the shade, listen, it'll be 110 yeah. in the shade. See, it's all under him. And we certainly don't necessarily, you know what, I found people like a sovereign God until he gets into their stuff, right? When you can't do what you want of your own volition and what you think is right and what you think is best, it's contrary to the Word of God, then sovereignty is, is kind of a difficult pill to swallow. 
Verse 11. Also by the watering he wearieth, and the thick clouds he scattereth his bright cloud. In other words, the sin, the sun, and the clouds are under his feet. He, he, he gets all that where he wants to. He puts it after the counsel of his own will. And when it rains, it rains. And when it snows, it snows. And when it's in the beautiful sunshine, it's the beautiful sunshine. All under the dominion of a sovereign God. Verse 12. He turneth around by his counsels. That's kind of an umbling. You remember David in every place said, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And you, you know, it was always a function of sin. Uh, that was David, you know, that was David's life. But on the same token, he did leave David at times. And we don't like to understand that as God's people. But his own, I'm not saying you lose your salvation, don't, don't get me wrong, but he does leave you. And he'll leave you there by yourself to you begging for him. That, that's under his dominion. That, that, and so uh, he, he, he says uh, he does that under his own volition. He does that because he wants to. He does it because he can that they may do whatsoever he commandeth them upon the face of the world in the earth. He causeth it to come whether for correction or his land for, or, for, or in the earth, excuse me, or for mercy. Hearken unto this, O Job, stand still. And consider the wondrous work of God. Now, this morning I would encourage you to do this. Just stand still a minute. And consider all that is around us. You know what? A lot of times we don't think God's meeting with us unless the building's shaking, do we? But he gives Job this advice. Job, be still a minute. Quit crying. Quit listening to those losers over there. Just be quiet. And God's still on the throne. Mm -hmm. Amen. He's still giving the rain. Yep. He's still giving the sunshine. He's still raising people up. He's still bringing them down. All under the counsel of his own will. That's peace, isn't it? Yeah, amen. That's something that this, the outside world knows nothing about. It's a, a thing that people who believe in a works for salvation has never tasted. Mm -hmm. Because they believe that they can control it. They believe if they pray hard enough, this and so will happen. No, no. It's under the, it's under the counsel of God's will. And he will do what seemeth good unto himself. Now, we'll, we'll do cartwheels when we think about salvation in that light, right? Yeah. But what about when it comes into your pantry? What, if, what about when it comes in and they come to shut the lights off? See, it, 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 can't be, it can't be one way and not the other, can it not? Either he's sovereign in all things, or he's sovereign in none. And, and, and so we find then, as the Lord's people, that as, as he is, as Elihu is counseling Job, he said, just take a look around. God is still on the throne. He's still up there. He's still doing everything after the counsels as the counsel of his own will. And this is what we may not see in the here and now. But listen, the counsel of his own will is always good. The counsel of his own will is always very best for me. The counsel of his own will is, is going to, the Bible says in the New Testament, worketh all things together, to, worketh all things together for good. To them that love the Lord. Amen. Jerry, the power gets out, cut out. I don't know what's good about it, but there's something there. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Easy, easy to talk about. Very, very difficult to live. Mm -hmm. Because see, those issues are going to come. Storms are on their way. And when we get there, what are you going to do? You know what? Uh, 
I remember this. Most of y'all remember Wayne Adams. And he, it was when he was pastoring an Armenian church. And he had this lady that just loved him to death. And uh, she was diagnosed with cancer. And she was weeping over it. And she was fearful of it. And she went to the doctor and it was already so advanced they put her in the hospital to die. And so there, there's no need for you even to go home. And Wayne told me, he said, I was, I was so upset. I had no idea what I was going to say to her. And he said, I opened the door. And she said, Wayne, Brother Wayne, have you heard I'm going home to be with Jesus? See, he gives you grace sufficient for that hour. She <laughs> wasn't a bit upset. She wasn't having the hummy drummies. She was looking forward to the day. So whatever happens, if you're eat up from the inside out with cancer, God's got something good in it. Yeah. Every time. Always. And we, as the Lord's people, we need to remember that and understand when the hard times come, God is always there. Go with me to 1 Corinthians and Paul's writing his, his letter to the church at Corinth. And sometimes I think it would be sound one like that we might come our way. Um, but he had some issues he wanted to discuss. And he says, And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not in the excellency of speech. Now, if you ever take a public speaking class, they'll tell you all these things. And I, I took a public speaking class in college because it, it fit into my schedule and it was one of my electives. And so I took it and it was all right. I liked it, you know, as we used to say, an easy A. And uh, so I, I took my easy A. And they taught you how all kinds of things about speaking and about what was the contents of your speech. And Paul did not go in that way. He went with, he went not with, and he could have done it. He was an excellent orator. He spoke five languages fluently. And he went with the very everyday common talk that you hear in Street County, Tennessee. He went with simple things. You, you know what? You're not going to spread the gospel to a 90-year-old woman uh, speaking to her about the, the elect knowledge of God. You'll, you'll preach the gospel to someone with lax understanding of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, plus nothing, minus nothing. And that, that's what Paul came with. He said, I didn't have anything. Uh, I wasn't a powerful orator. I wasn't, I wasn't one that was just showing how good I was and how knowledgeable I was. And brethren, when I came to you, I came not with excellent speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's pretty simple, isn't it? Pretty easy to understand. You, you, you know why I stand uh, this morning on my way to glory? Because of the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> you, you, you know why I stand looking forward and confident in the days I had? I had uh, because of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know exactly what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to go down. And you know what? You need to get to the point where you could care less. <laughs> Because you know what? God is on the throne. And he do. I, you know, that's a very simple thing. He said, I just preached to them Jesus and him crucified. That's a very simple thing to say. Trust God when life is at its worst. Mm -hmm. Trust God. Now, listen, church, um, that won't happen right away. You begin to trust God. By trusting him with the little things. And then when trouble comes, you'll be able to trust him with the big things. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we see, as the Lord's people, that Paul was a very simplistic preacher. Verse 3, And I was with you in weakness. And I really believe that it wasn't a, a fleshly weakness, although I don't think Paul was the most healthy man that ever lived. 
But he, he said, I was, you, I was with you in weakness. In other words, his words not probably not that dynamic and, and, and not that powerful an orator. He was in weakness when he spoke with them. He said, I came to you in weakness. And that's the kind of stuff God uses. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Now, you know what, Jared? You know what, Kenny? You know what he was, he was trembling about? Speaking the things of God. You know, it should, it should make us tremble every time we get up there and tell people of the goodness of God and the means of redemption, the, the way that salvation is, and we get up there like we're talking about butterflies. Paul didn't do that. He, he was trembling from the inside out at the thought of presenting the glorious gospel of Christ. And man, that's where we ought to be. Uh, listen, we're handling something that's precious and good. And, and it ought not to be just thrown around like a dish rag. It, it, it is something that, that sets before us. It's the very, the very concept, the very living Son of God before us. Verse 4, in my speech and my preaching... Was not, was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but the demonstration of the Spirit and power, and of power. You, you, you know what I want in preaching? I want the Holy Ghost to show up. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, you know what? If I stumble and mumble over my words and God shows up, hey, that's sufficient for me. And you know what I have found? He shows up when I stumble and mumble, more so than I, when I think I got it all in line. You know why? Because it's, it, it's dependent on Him. Mm -hmm. See, when something's dependent on Him, He'll show up because there in hand He is glorified. Now, when we think we're a Billy Graham and we get up there with all kinds of fancy words and going on about it, listen, you're on your own then. But when God shows up, so Paul says, my preaching was very simplistic. It was very easy to understand. Verse 6, Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect or complete, yet not the salvation of this world, but of the princes, uh, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. Right. Now, we see a little bit of glimpses in... Uh, the revelation about the glories that await us. But as he's closing out Revelation, John says this, the half has never yet been told. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that stuff about walls of jasper and streets of gold and the beauty of the Lord and he has on his son, King of Kings and Lord of Lords running down this way. That's the best John could do. <laughs> but the half has never been yet told. Yeah. Right? You ever preached a sermon, boys, and it couldn't quite click with what, what God had given you? Yeah. That's, that, that's it. Yeah. You told half. You told half. You told half. But that would have never been in time. Right. And that's where we need to be. Listen, we need to be focused on eternity. Yeah. You know, You know what? When I focus on eternity... This right here just dims out. Yeah. You don't care if your truck's ugly or nice. You don't care if your home is, it, is perfect or a little dirty. All you focus on is eternal things because just a glimpse of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, can you imagine when we glimpse him with this? Now, with a spiritual eye, you, you, you've got kind of even Paul said, we look through glass darkly. But can you imagine 
feast in on him the very first time. It, it's beyond my comprehension. It's beyond my understanding, but I know it's going to happen. I know it's going to be real. So as you think about the glory of God this morning, the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ, look unto him. Look unto him. The Bible says he's the author and finisher of your faith. Yeah. And so you look unto him. I, I want to see more every day that I live. And I trust that it'll be that way until he takes me home. However he wants to do that, whatever he, that's when you get down to whatever seems good to himself. Amen. If he wants to take me, good. If he wants to catch me away, hey, that'll be good too. But I want to see him. Yeah. I, want to, I want to stand in his presence. What about you? Yeah.